Welcome, and thank you for joining us today to honor and celebrate our Chancellor, Dr. Carlo Montemagno. While he was with us a relatively short time, his impact will be everlasting. He came to SIU after a distinguished career as a naval officer, scientist, and campus leader. He came to SIU because he loved a challenge. He believed we could rise together, and we will. He had no doubt about that. Pam and family, we are deeply sorry for your loss. We are happy that you were willing to loan him to us. We hope to share with you today and with the SIU and Carbondale community how much he meant to all of us. In between transitions of speakers, you will get snippets of his favorite songs. I would like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Kevin Dorsey, interim president of the SIU system. Dr. Montemagno was brought in by the Board of Trustees as a change agent. And as we all know, change is hard and his beginning was rough, not made any easier by administrative turmoil and a bad diagnosis. Before I met Carlo, I had heard of some of the difficulties and was somewhat wary. However, during our first meeting after I had become the interim president a few months ago, I learned that we had both been born in the same section of the Bronx, both of us had moved to New Jersey as young children, so I figured he was one of the good guys. And this was confirmed by what I heard at the student vigil, at the cemetery, and from private conversations that I had with other folks around town and around campus. That is, that he was not only a determined man with a vision, but also a person who cared about others. And this is the way that I choose to remember Carlo. And now that he has done the difficult work of getting change started, it is left to the rest of us to finish. Together, I think we can succeed in this task if we put SIU and our learners ahead of self. To Pam and his family, we share in your sadness, but are grateful that we had his guidance to get us started. Thank you. Have to raise this a little bit. Pam, on behalf of myself and the rest of the Board of Trustees, I want to extend our deepest and sincere sympathy to you and the rest of your family. I last saw and spoke to Carlo on September 29th at the SIU football game. I stopped by with my family to see him in the Chancellor's Box at Saluki Stadium. He was always talking about his love for SIU, its students, and the things he was hoping to accomplish to improve the educational opportunities which he believed would attract more students to this campus. As we were talking, he noticed his grandson Spencer and my grandson Will playing an occasional watching the football game. Observing the two of them, he turned to me and said, you know, there's nothing more important in life than family. Carlo had the right perspective on life. Although he was dedicated to his profession and gave every ounce of energy he had to making SIUC a better place, family was first and foremost to him, as it should have been. Last April, I had Carlos speak at a naturalization ceremony I had here on campus where I administered the oath of citizenship to over 50 new citizens that came from all walks of life and countries. It was then that I learned how remarkable Carlos' journey, personal journey has been. He talked about how his mother's parents came to the United States from the United Kingdom, Scotland and Ireland shortly after World War I. His paternal great-grandfather came from Italy but it was his paternal grandmother's story of coming from Italy 
when the climate changed under Benito Mussolini that touched him the most. He said he was the first generation in many, many generations ever to go to college or even graduate from a university. And now he had the privilege of leading a great university. He was very proud of his heritage. Carlo came to town with a seemingly impossible task of turning this campus around in the face of declining state funding and enrollment. But he was not deterred and would have none of it. He was passionate about SIU and its future. He thought outside the box and had a vision and a plan that he firmly believed would succeed in improving the academic opportunities and increasing enrollment. Change is hard in any organization, especially educational institutions. But Carlo was an optimist and believed change was needed for this campus to grow and prosper. He is right. His strength of spirit and boundless energy with his ideas and innovation energized this campus. He was an amazing and very intelligent individual who was down to earth and connected with students, faculty, staff, alumni, the community, and the region. I've heard it said that the measure of true success is not what you've achieved or whether you've made a difference. It's knowing that you have touched the lives of others and in some way made this world a little bit brighter and a little bit better. Carlo did all that and more, not only in what he achieved in his professional endeavors, but also raising a wonderful and extremely close family, and he made a huge difference in the lives of so many people. You know, all of us occasionally get unsolicited emails, of which 90% I hit the delete button. But I received an email a couple years ago, and I can't remember who sent it, but it was a poem that I read and kept and I would like to share with you. You know, whenever you visit a cemetery and you look at gravestones, you see the date of birth and the date of death. And in between those two dates is a dash. The poem that I'm reading is authored by Linda Ellis and it's entitled The Dash. I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend. He referred to the dates on his tombstone from the beginning to the end. He noted at first the date of his birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was the dash between those years. For that dash represents all the time he spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved him know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we lived and loved and how we spent our dash. So think about this long and hard. Are there things you would like to change? For you never know how much time is left that can still be rearranged. If we just slow down enough to consider what is true and real and always try to understand how other people feel and be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat each other with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you spent your dash? Carlos' dash was filled with love of family, love of country, love for SIU, a love an advocate for higher education and the opportunities he saw in everyone that all things are possible. So it is up to us to ensure a purpose to his life that was cut short by illness, but not by drive, determination, dedication, <clears throat> and a vision of educational opportunities and excellence for all. Let us rededicate ourselves to this beautiful and wonderful campus and university to a culture of completion of his vision and an obsession with excellence that Carlo brought to our community, to our campus, and to our lives. I think it's easy to forget, and you have turned this back down, <laughs> that behind the man with all this drive and passion was a man that really cared about the students the core of this university. 
Carla was a force on our campus and in our community. From the moment I met him, he wanted to know and connect with students. I'd be in the middle of a campus tour with prospective families and run into him, and he was always so excited to meet those families. He would always introduce himself, ask them how the tour was, and insist that, he car that they call him Carlo. He would ask about their visit, what they liked about SIU, and what they were looking forward to. He wanted so much for them to feel the passion he had for SIU. That passion is what really connected him to us. I've heard countless times in the past days of the impact he's had. I've heard so many students talk about the time he had lunch with them in Lentz, or the Student Center, or how he'd be right in the stands at the basketball game, cheering on our team, or how he'd be inviting the dog pound over to his house and cheering on the away games with them. He once told me that he answers, he answered every email that a student sent him, and he did. He was dedicated, dedicated to getting students involved and excited. Every time I met with him, he asked, he asked if I was going to the next sporting game. No matter how many times I told him sports weren't really my thing, <laughs> he tried his hardest to get me to go. And he eventually got me to, and I loved it. From supporting the SIU Esports RSO, which we're now having a huge impact on our campus, to cheering on our sports teams, to celebrating summer internships and jobs, he celebrated our wins as students just as much as we celebrated our own. He knew that SIU needed passion, and he brought it to everything he did, especially to the students he was serving. And not only was he passionate, he listened. Even when someone disagreed with him, he listened. In USG, he came to one of our meetings to listen to the students' concern and to discuss with them the impact of the reorganization. That meeting, it was only after one suggestion that he come, and he was on board. He wanted to come and talk to students face to face because he cared about us. While in the past year wasn't the smoothest, Carlo, at the end of the day, cared about us as students. He cared about SIU and us, and he will be missed. And all I can say is to the family, to Pam, his children, his grandchildren, thank you for sharing the special man that you had with us so he can impact us just as much as he impacted you. Chancellor Carlo Montemagno. In our first meeting, we found much in common. We agreed that building enrollment was job number one. With that in mind, we built stronger relationships between the city and the university. We shared planning and objectives, participated together in city and campus events. We strengthened Carbondale's image as a home to a great research university with an entry marker that reads, Welcome to Carbondale, home of Southern Illinois University. The expense of the marker was shared equally by the city and the SIU Foundation. With financing from the Chamber of Commerce and local businesses, you now see year-round banners on light poles and Saluki flags throughout the city on game day. Carbondale continued with our streetscape projects while Carlo avidly pursued his inspired vision for our university. I remember seeing his well-known whiteboards for the first time. After explaining to me what was on them at the time, he asked if I had any questions. I hesitated and then asked, why so many erasers? Literally, they were two feet apart down all these boards. Uh, his answer, it saves me a lot of walking. A few weeks later, I said to him that I thought he had a genius IQ. He replied, I'm no genius, I'm just a hard worker. Recently, a member of Carbondale's tourism board said, Carbondale has enough going for it, it doesn't have to pretend to be something it's not. We have to be who we are. Carlo and I agreed early on that we need much to be much more than we are today. In many ways, we need the best of who we were. The Cultural and Entertainment Center of Southern Illinois with a growing student population. 
He was a good man with a bold, innovative vision for Southern Law University at Carbondale, the city, and the region. I considered him to be a good friend. I miss him. I'd like to say I'm honored to be here to offer a few brief thoughts about the Chancellor. And if you see my notes, the Chancellor is in bold letters. I'd like to use some words to describe what I felt about and, and saw as Carlo's person. The first word is energy. Carlo was incredibly active and seemed to never need rest when he was working towards a solution. The next word is vision. Carlo saw a better future. Carlo saw a better future for the university, its students, its faculty. He simply couldn't see it any other way. Carlo saw a better vision, a better future for Southern Illinois as a place to live. Carlo saw a better future for the relationship between the university and the other businesses in Southern Illinois and vice versa. Perseverance. Carlo had the courage of his convictions. Until the very end, he kept pursuing his ideas and had a singular focus on how to make SIU the best university possible. He stood for what he believed in and worked tirelessly to achieve his goals. Collaboration. Carlo came to me with a vision of creating a four-year nursing school for Southern Illinois not designed to compete with the community college programs that already exist, but designed to augment and support the mission of those, university, of those colleges so that we could train nurses right here in Southern Illinois. Carlo also arranged to bring business leaders together to discuss how we could work together to improve the relationship between the university and businesses, to talk about how the university could help local businesses, to talk about how local businesses could help the university. To Pam and, and Carlo's family, I pledge to you, we are going to continue that work, that energy that Carlo brought in terms of collaboration. The final word is genuine. Carlo was so genuine. His handshake was genuine. His enthusiasm was genuine. He just was genuine. Now for me, that's a great word. A couple quotes to kind of sum up my thoughts on Carlo from John Quincy Adams. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. And then from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Carlo always stood tall, and he always supported his beliefs. And I enjoyed our working relationship, I enjoyed our friendship, and I will miss Carlo very much. It is my honor to speak to you from several perspectives as the interim dean, a faculty since 1985, and a Carbondale native who attended university school during the time of SIU's excitement and growth with Delight Morris building SIUC, Buckminster Fuller giving lectures, Gary Drake bringing the Grateful Dead, Elton John and the Doobie Brothers to the arena, plus many other people and activities keeping the campus hopping with enthusiasm, occasional unrest, and excitement which was always innovative and competitive. We were known for excellent academics, relevant and critical research and community service. What I'm saying is SIU attracted excellent individuals. Chancellor Montemagno is one who would have fit during that time, and he certainly fit when he brought back the idea to regenerate who we really are in our tradition. I'm going to share snapshots of my personal experiences to support my statements. My first true interaction with Ch Chancellor Montemagno was at the Ducoin State Fair Parade. I don't know if his family remembers. We had only been introduced in a mass crowd, but he recognized me standing across the road and waved me over to stand with the family and watch the parade go by. He treated me as a longtime friend. Carlo reached out to people and engaged them as peers and friends, and he adored his family. 
My first true one-on-one -on -one interaction was when he called me to his office shortly after I was named interim dean. He showed me the whiteboards, which were the topic of campus discussion. Quite honestly, I was thrilled. I'm a landscape architect and designing gaming simulations. I'm familiar with this process. This process is common to what's used when you're making decisions that have a lot of complex components. As a leader and a visionary, he set the stage. In March 2018, a small group attended an, arc, an agriculture conference in Cuba. There were impressive international high-tech exhibits from Germany, Australia, Italy, everywhere. As he looked around the, re the technology, he recognized two that he had been involved in the innovation of. I was very impressed. He was truly an innovator. Later on that trip, he spied a group of Cuban high school students hanging out in the shade of a large tree. He joined them and quickly engaged them in conversation with laughter. He loved students, and he took the time to be interested in them. Leaving Cuba, as we waited at the airport, Carlo and, Carlo and I boasted about our passport stamps and shared iPhone photos. His passport had several extensions. It was like a big, fat wallet, compared very poorly to mine, small one with a few stamps and no extensions. He was a traveler, and most of his travels were work or research related. Looking at photos, I think we were competitive and tied on the cute grandchildren. But when I thought I'd outstunt him, I showed him me snowshoeing at National Glacier Park. Ha ha, I thought. But no, he rolls up one of him climbing about a 50-foot frozen waterfall at the same park. <laughs> he was an athlete and loved adventure. Carlo joined Dean's Council soon after he made it public that he had cancer. His words were powerful and inspiring. We were silenced in the moment. Finally, when we thanked him, he looked at us and said, for what, doing my job? My last conversation with Carlo was in a football suite. He pulled me aside and dogmatically instructed me on an opportunity to pursue for agriculture. I was again thrilled with his ideas as our arms waved as we spoke. And as he walked away, someone came up to me and asked me if he was chewing me out. I said, no, I explained. We were just excited about a new opportunity. Carlo had his own way. He got to the point, he didn't waste time, and he didn't like to see it wasted. He lived life to the fullest, he didn't give up. It is with a heavy heart that I'm standing here today telling these stories as memories. Yet it is with a warm heart as I reflect on the powerful spirit and confidence that SIU, in SIU that Chancellor Montemagno has left us to get to work. I first met the Chancellor at the eve of the eclipse. As I was shaking his hand, there was a moment where my knuckles turned red and my pinky finger fell asleep. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I lost that handshake, but it wasn't a competition. As we finished and the blood rushed back to my hand, someone said, Rick, you and Carlo have something in common. You're both from New Jersey. His bio said nothing about being from New Jersey. I read it. I saw New York, Cincinnati, UCLA, but not New Jersey. When I mentioned it to him, one of my fellow board members that was standing with us said, do you blame him? <laughs> I was surprised to find, up that, find out that we grew up in neighboring towns, separated by three miles. Pam attended the same Catholic grade school that my sister did. Their wedding photos were taken at our township lake. Our high schools were arch rivals. We beat them in football, if we beat them in football, our season was a success even if we lost every other game. We were separated by four years, but we knew the same people. We traveled the same roads. For the next 10 minutes, we shared stories about the shore, shore, movie theaters, pizza, real pizza, <laughs> Jersey corn and Jersey tomatoes. Only a few of you are gonna understand that. We laughed, we were having fun. It was a conversation about home. Meanwhile, there was 10 other people waiting to talk to us, talk to him. New Jersey dominated the conversation as it often did. At our board meetings, which he would attend regularly, Michelle Suarez made the mistake of seating us next to each other. In one such meeting, I said something and he commented about my Jersey accent and I looked over at him and said, oh, but you blend. 
His time with our board was informative, enlightening, and most of all, motivating. He shared his vision, his dreams, and his challenges. At our first meeting, after his opening remarks, we gave him an applause, which is the first time that's ever happened in recent memory. He understood the importance of the association. He understood the role the association plays in connecting alumni. He supported our events and provided counseling when needed. The Alumni Association, especially the Executive Committee, supported him. We were not experts on the specifics of his plan. We supported his passion for SIU. He was our leader, our chancellor. I am not amazed that someone that has been in this community or on this campus for such a short period of time could have had such a lasting effect. If you knew him, you know what I'm talking about. One thing that continues to resonate with me was his support for athletics, even though he wasn't an athlete. As you all know, we sat and cheered with the students at athletic events, even on road games, bought them pizza, Pam made brownies before and delivered them before each game. He wore the dog pound t-shirts. He was one of them. He was one of us. I asked him if we can take a selfie at graduation, as it was my responsibility to give the alumni address. With his activity on social media, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a family picture of the entire graduating class, our newest alumni, our new family members. I ran the idea past the alumni staff and the response was iffy. Some thought it might be taken away from the pomp and circumstance of the event. When I told him during our baseball reunion, which he and Pam attended, that we shouldn't do the selfie, his response was nonsense. It's a great idea, we're doing it. I don't know, you probably saw the picture prior. Please focus on him, not on me, and the fact that the cap was two sizes too small. I'm still trying to grasp why. Why did it take almost 1,000 miles and almost 40 years since I stepped foot on this campus for our paths to cross when we grew up only a few minutes apart? Perhaps I'll never know, but I'm glad I got the chance to meet him. SIU is my home. You are my family. Together we will succeed. That was the last line of his State of the University address in 2017. SIU is my home. You are my family. Together we will succeed. We will succeed. I am truly grateful and honored to be here and proud to call my friend. Thank you. All right. I was lucky to hang out with Chancellor Montemagno, uh, Montemagno on multiple occasions in the SIU student section, what we like to happily refer to as the dog pound. Um, I, I say hang out because that was kind of the nature of our relationship, in my opinion. It was like a friendship, and I feel like it was in that similar way with a lot of the students. Well, the dog pound was only a small part of what the chancellor did on this campus. I feel like his involvement with our group specifically is a fantastic, even though it's simplified, representation of his impact on campus in general. The chancellor had a spark and a passion often missing in the people on our campus. It was a part of his leadership philosophy to showcase that energy for SIU, and specifically SIU athletics. There was never a game I attended that I didn't see the chancellor. And my main man, Spencer, his grandson is not here, but he's welcome in the dog pound anytime. But I didn't just bump into him at the games either. He wasn't just sitting up in the bleachers, showing his face to make it look like he supported our teams. He was down there with us in the front row, cheering alongside us, encouraging our teams, and most of the time trying to distract the opposing teams. We, are, we do our best to comically, yet respectfully, of course, lighten the mood of the game and get in the opposing team's heads. Uh, sorry, one second. All right, well, the Chancellor, when, you, when he understood what our objectives were and had ensured that they were respectful, he joined in with us. <laughs> of course, he was often the one to lead the cheers and to get the, our group going. It's, this is the only university I've been a part of, but I'd be willing to bet that, there were, that we were one of the only schools to have a leader who not only said he supports our teams, but who had the bravery to get down there next to us and cheer and join in the fun. It felt like he was one of us and truly wanted to build a close relationship with, with the student body, and that meant everything to me. Each of those friends I made in the dog pound would confirm what I've said. They would also tell you that when he showed up to the student section, normally with Spencer, he would greet us with a friendly hello, followed immediately by, how are classes? All A's, right? He wouldn't simply stand next to us and yell and make it look good, but he would ask us how things are going and take a genuine interest in 
what we were up to. On several occasions at a late basketball game, I had to reassure him that I was going to make time for my coursework later that night, as he was worried my dedication to SIU athletics might get in the way of academics. He sincerely wanted only the best for us. He built a great relationship with those of us in the student section, so much so that he invited a group of students and staff to his house for a viewing party of the basketball game against Missouri State. I'm sure this is something most people didn't know about. It was no, there were no cameras, big announcements, wide invitations, and no recognition for the event of any kind. But it was the chancellor genuinely opening his home to students and staff because he felt it was the type of event that would build a stronger SIU community. And he was right, certainly. And that night, I was able to talk with SIU alumni, staff, students, and lifelong SIU fans about our experiences with SIU. It made me proud and excited to be rebuilding the SIU dog pound every day after that event. It meant everything to me to have his support in our efforts. It meant everything to me that the leader of our campus trusted our student group enough to invite us to his home. Of course, we've all heard of college students doing some pretty crazy and stupid things. And still, he valued our company over the potential risk of taking us in as guests. And that meant a lot to me. As I said earlier, I think his involvement with the Dog Pound was a great, simplified expression of his impact on campus. He encouraged us all to be proud, show our spirit, be weird if necessary, and to have faith in the community we can build at SIU. He brought something to our group and to the campus. He clearly gave everything he had to our campus, and I always remember and be grateful for that. I'll miss him greatly in my final year here at SIU and wish he could see the fruits of his labor. Chancellor Montemagno made a great, significant impact on my SIU experience in the short time he was on our campus. And I truly hope that we can continue to build on some of the progress set in motion by him. One of the most ambitious, courageous, and supportive people I've ever met. I can conclude in the only way I feel he would if he was speaking on this topic specifically. Go dogs. My cabinet colleagues asked me to represent the Chancellor's leadership team. It is an honor to share our collective thoughts with you. All the Chancellor Montemagno was with us for just about 16 months. He left a lasting impression. How might we articulate what he meant to us? Here are some of our reflections. Chancellor Montemagno believed in our potential. Although he had several other opportunities he was considering, the chancellor chose to come to SIU. Even when we were not at our best, with a quick study and razor-sharp analysis, he discerned our strengths, the potential inherent in the work we were doing, and saw an opportunity to implement a visionary plan. He certainly loved the challenge. Having worked in the military and the corporate world prior to entering the academy, the chancellor preferred to move at warp speed, urging us forward with energy and enthusiasm, a twinkle in his eye and exuding a sense of urgency. Looking back, we are glad he hurried. He was able to leave us with a roadmap developed during the short time he spent with us. We remain inspired by his vision and a legacy that is bound to shape our future. The Board of Trustees hired him to bring about change, and he delivered on that charge. Chancellor Montemagno was an engineer at work. During one of his first media interviews after arriving at SIU, he talked about the reward of solving one of his early scientific challenges. He told the reporter that no individual on the team could solve the entire problem alone. But by breaking it down and applying the individual expertise of each team member to the parts, it got solved through teamwork. When faced with complicated challenges, many of us look at the whole and see something insurmountable. As an engineer, Dr. Montemagno looked at the parts. He believed that by focusing on each piece of the puzzle and its relationship to the bigger picture, any mission can be accomplished. This was his strategy to achieve his vision. 
It's also why he was constantly reminding us of the importance of focusing on our mission every day in every action that we take. As many of his ideas for SIU began to take root and gain ownership across campus, he often said that his vision 2025 was no longer his plan, but the university's plan. And now, with his untimely loss, we have been given full ownership of the whole and the parts, if we choose to take it. His legacy lies in showing that each and every member of the SIU community, no matter their role, has the power to contribute in securing our university's future. Chancellor Montemagno focused on students, the community, and the region. Students were very dear to his heart. He enjoyed spending time with them and was keen on improving the students' experience with imaginative initiatives, including a maker space and esports. He urged us to step up our game and enhance our recruitment and retention efforts so that the institution, including students and employees, as well as the community could thrive. He was acutely aware of SIU's unique mission of serving the region and actively reached out to community organizations and strove to build corporate relationships. On a personal note, having had the privilege of working closely with the chancellor for the past six months, I remain impressed with his pursuit of excellence, interdisciplinary perspective, dynamic presence, creative initiatives, bold, decisive actions, the courage to stand up for us, the guts to initiate change, his firm belief in our potential to succeed, and his fierce loyalty for all things Saluki. We extend our heartful, our heartfelt condolences to his wife, Pam, his children, grandchildren, and family. Thank you so much for sharing Chancellor Montemagno with us. Before I close, we'd like to invite you all to a reception in Ballroom D in the Student Center immediately following the service. I would also like to thank all of our faculty, students, and our alumni musicians. We heard a lot of common themes today. Visionary, inspirational, passionate, driven, strategic, proud, brilliant, and committed. We heard about him as a leader, a colleague, and a friend. We knew him as someone who would never give up, no matter the cause, no matter the barriers. We heard about him as a Saluki through and through. We learned a lot from Carlo Montemagno, but perhaps the most important is to be driven by our own mission. Those mission statements you've seen all across campus were intended to remind us that we have a purpose as an institution, as keepers of the institution's reputation and influencers of its future. You can see the full mission statement on the back of your program. In many ways, it reflects the chancellor's own drive and determination. Some of the words in the statement make that case. One is opportunity. Chancellor Montemagno embraced opportunity in every sense. Whether developing partnerships to advance the university or making it possible for all students to succeed, he was always looking for opportunities to advance SIU. Innovation. There's no question that Dr. Montemagno was an innovator. In his research and in his leadership, he brought new ideas forward and developed plans for achieving them. Nurturing. Now, it might be said that the chances form of nurturing was a type of tough love, but he cared. He certainly heard, we certainly heard about that from our students today, and at the same time, he expected us to do our part. He was like a coach who, who challenged us to be better, to take ownership of the change that we could make possible. Another word in the mission is catalyst. This probably describes him best. He was brought to SIU to be a catalyst for rapid change. 
and he delivered on that promise with big ideas and the ability to inspire others to believe in them. Transform. Dr. Montemagno was a transformative leader. Those big ideas that he set in motion have the power to transform SIU for the better. It is our job now, our job, to take that forward. Pam, we know that Carlo was first and foremost dedicated to you and your family. We are lucky to been a part of, we are lucky to have him be a part of his extended Saluki family and grateful for his belief in our mission, our university, and our region. I'll always remember the first time I met him and he showed me his playlist. And that song that sticks in my mind, Ain't No Stopping Us Now. That's my mama's favorite song. And she told me why it was her favorite song because she said, there ain't no stopping us. We on the move, and that's what we have to remember. Thank you all for coming. And if Carlo were here, he would want to end with his favorite saying as he ended almost all of his presentations. Go Salukis. Thank you.